When it comes to rocket launchers, it's hard to ignore HIMARS. Its engineers describe it as the most technically advanced, affordable, and sustainable artillery solution. This is one of the main reasons why they've been donated to Ukraine to help defend their country. HIMARS has been a game changer in the war, but why is that the case? What makes this rocket launcher and its rockets so dangerous and in a world-leading class? That's what we're going to look at today in this video. HIMARS stands for High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, and its name tells you everything about why it's so useful. Not only is it a very powerful rocket launching system, but it's also very transportable, meaning that it's easy and quick to get it to where it needs to be on the battlefield. The creation of HIMARS was driven by the need to equip infantry, airborne, and rapid deployment units with high mobile rocket launchers suitable for airlift to anywhere they were needed. In early 2004, the production testing of the HIMARS combat vehicle was completed. During one of the tests, a C-130 plane successfully delivered to Fort Sill Eastern Firing Range in Oklahoma. In less than five minutes, the vehicle was unloaded. It then received a mission via combat data and fired off six training rockets. HIMARS became a lighter version of the M270 MLRS predecessor and entered into service with the U.S. Army and Marine Corps in 2005. 900 launchers were planned to be built, but reports suggest only 540 HIMARS launchers were built instead. The first certified unit to have HIMARS was the 3rd Division, 27th Field Artillery Regiment, 18th Airborne Corps. The HIMARS system features an M142 fighting vehicle, transport and charging vehicle, unguided and guided rockets, which we'll explain in more detail later, and fire control equipment. The M142 vehicle is made of a modified chassis of a 5-ton truck with 6x6 wheel configuration. The engine is a Caterpillar 3116 ATAAC diesel with gas turbine supercharging, 6.6-liter, .6 and has 290 horsepower at 2,600 RPM. It also has six cylinders, a fuel reserve of 56 gallons, and a power reserve of 480 kilometers. The vehicle's transmission is an Allison Automatic 7-speed gearbox. The suspension on the M142 is parabolic with leaf springs. It has a very useful ground clearance of 564 millimeters, which helps it overcome water obstacles with a depth of almost a meter. The system can fire an array of rockets, and reloading is made by the crew in only 4-5 to five minutes. They're helped by an integrated crane and escorted by an MTVR Mark 37 resupply vehicle. This truck carries two sets of reload rockets and is also fitted with an integral crane. If needed, it can also tow a trailer with two more pods. The reloading process is done remotely from a firing position. This is done to avoid counter-battery fire. Pods with rockets can be unloaded in various locations down an arranged route. The launcher vehicle travels from one location to another, loads a new pod with rockets, fires them immediately, and then travels to another location to pick up a new pod. All of these traits help HIMARS to be ultra-portable. Another reason why this is the case is the portability of the whole system itself. This artillery system can be airlifted by a C-130 Hercules aircraft. This plane can only carry a single HIMARS at any one time. For more artillery, the larger C-17 Globemaster III can carry three loaded or four empty HIMARS systems if needed. This artillery system is rapidly deployable, and it can be airlifted anywhere in the world. On top of this, the wheeled vehicles can self-deploy over long distances if required. In terms of the rockets that HIMARS can fire, this is easily adjustable depending on the mission needed. M26 was the baseline 227mm rocket. It's 3.96 meters long and weighs 307 kilograms. This rocket had a range of 32 kilometers and fitted with a 120 kilogram dual purpose warhead equipped with 644 bomblets. These stats made it highly effective against troops and vehicles. Then there's the M30 guided rocket or guided multiple launch rocket system. Other names for this include guided MLRS or GMLRS. It was built to counter the threat of hostile long range rocket and cannon artillery. 
it was a replacement for the basic M26 rockets and other defunct weaponry. GMLRS has a 65 to 70 kilometer range and its built-in GPS means it has a much higher accuracy than its predecessors. It's fitted with a dual-purpose warhead with 404 bomblets. The M30 provides the same number of hits as the M26 and M26A2, but fewer rockets are needed to hit the target. Now M30A1 and M31A1 variants have taken over the original M30 GMLRS. HIMARS is also capable of launching the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATA-CMS. These rockets are designed to engage point targets such as command posts, missile launchers, air defense facilities, communication centers, warehouses of fuel and lubricants located in heavily guarded areas any conditions day or night. It performs its flight along the semi-ballistic trajectory when its initial acceleration is carried out on a pre-programmed rigid trajectory. After this, the flight is then in a controlled mode. The missile is controlled by aerodynamic rudders using signals from the onboard control system, which uses real-time information to adjust the angle of impact. It can be launched at an angle to the firing plane at ranges less than the maximum, which hides the coordinates of the starting position. ATA-CMS has recently been in the news as part of the defense package that Ukraine has received, but another type of rocket has also been in the headlines for the same reason. This is the ground-launched Small Diameter Bomb, or GLSDB, as designed by Saab and Boeing. These rockets are highly effective at long ranges against moving targets. The system uses an existing weapon paired with a rocket motor. The difference between GLSDB and traditional artillery weapons is that it offers 360-degree coverage for high and low angles of attack. In real terms, this means the weapon can fly around mountains to hit the enemy, or it can even circle back around to a target behind where the rocket was launched. It has a range of 93 miles in front of the launch vehicle, or alternatively, it can hit targets 43 miles behind it. This system has proved highly popular with U.S. allies around the world and has been exported to Jordan, Singapore, and the United Arab Emirates. There are also other countries that have been considering purchasing the system. In 2022, Estonia ordered six HIMARS systems and in 2023, Taiwan plans to purchase 29 HIMARS vehicles. More famously, 16 HIMARS systems were delivered to Ukraine in order to help their defense against the Russian invasion. These proved to be an extremely accurate and deadly system for the Ukrainian army. Multiple Russian command posts, ammunition storages, and concentrations of troops and armored vehicles, as well as bridges, were taken out by HIMARS. More significantly, the location of a lot of these targets were well back from the Russian front lines. Russian air defenses struggled to cope with the accuracy of the attacks, and in comparison to Russian equivalents, HIMARS proved to have a better range and accuracy. Deliveries of HIMARS and M270 MLRS systems to Ukraine have made a huge difference in the narrative of the Ukrainian war. As Lockheed Martin says, HIMARS is one of the most cost-effective yet destructive weapons available. This has made it an excellent addition to the Ukrainian defenses. Its versatility but super-quick deployment speeds means it can be introduced to any part of the battlefield in record time. And once it's set up, rockets like ATACMS, GMLRS, and GLSDB have shown to be deadly accurate at a variety of ranges. As the war in Ukraine progresses, it's not known what will be its conclusion. But what is known is that HIMARS is having a massive impact in protecting Ukraine and its people with devastating impact. What do you think about the HIMARS? Let us know in the comments below and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Spotlight for more. Thanks for watching. Main battle tanks are key military weapons as they provide direct fire and durability on the battlefield. Today, it's common to see military units that consist of main battle tanks only, as these weapons are advanced enough to perform operations without other units. In recent years, 
their impressive development led to awesome machines with very powerful armor and high-tech systems. The M1 Abrams family of main battle tanks, which entered service in 1980, is America's contribution of such weapons. Over the years, there have been extensive improvements to this incredible machine, and it still serves as the main battle tank of the United States Army. In this video, we're going to take a look at how it all started and how it has improved. The M1 Abrams main battle tank was developed by Chrysler Defense, now General Dynamics Land Systems, with production starting in the 1970s. This main battle tank was named in honor of General Abrams, commander of U.S. forces during the Vietnam War. It first entered service in 1980 and was produced for the U.S. Army from 1978 until 1992. The M1A1 entered production in 1985, followed by the M1A2 in 1986. During Operation Desert Storm, 2,000 M1 Abrams tanks were used. The M1 proved vastly superior and not a single tank was destroyed by enemy fire. Since then, the Army has modernized its M1 inventory with a series of upgrades to improve the tank's capabilities. The M1 Abrams features composite armor similar to British Cobham, which features multiple layers of steel and ceramics. It may also be fitted with explosive reactive armor. Interior of the tank is lined with Kevlar protecting the crew against spalling. Ammunition is stored in the turret bustle with blowout panels. It is fitted with the M68A1 105mm rifled gun, which is loaded manually. The M1 is compatible with all standard NATO 105mm tank ammunition. A total of 55 rounds are carried for the main gun, including 44 rounds stored in the turret bustle and 11 rounds stored in protective containers inside the hull. This tank has a modern fire control system with a high first hit probability. It can destroy tank-sized targets at a range of 2 kilometers while firing on the move. Secondary armament consists of a 7.62 mm coaxial machine gun. Also, there's a 12.7 mm and another 7.62 mm machine gun mounted on top of the roof. The M1 Abrams weighs 54.54 tons, measures 7.92 meters in length, 3.65 meters in width, and 2.38 meters in height. It has a top road speed of 72.4 kilometers per hour and has a range of 498 kilometers. There is a crew of four, including the driver, commander, gunner, and ammunition loader. The driver sits at the front of the tank inside the hull, while the commander stands inside the rotating turret. The gunner sits at his feet. Armored bulkheads separate the fuel tanks from the crew compartment. The M1 Abrams is powered by an Avco Lycoming, now Honeywell, AGT 1500 gas turbine engine, developing 1500 horsepower. Essentially, it's a modified helicopter engine, adapted for use on tanks. It's a multi-fuel engine, which can run on any grade of petrol, diesel, aviation fuel, and kerosene. This engine has an impressive performance and is compact for its power output. So even though the Abrams tank is heavy and bulky, it's surprisingly agile. It is faster than any other tanks and has superior cross-country performance. Also, the engine is remarkably quiet. Due to this feature, the Abrams is even nicknamed the Whispering Death. The M1 was followed in production by the improved M1A1, which has an improved armor protection compared with its predecessor. The front turret and hull armor of the M1A1 features advanced composite armor reinforced with depleted uranium mesh for better protection. One of the most important improvements over the M1 is the M256 120mm smoothbore gun, originally developed by Rhyme Metal and produced in the USA under license. This gun is loaded manually, and the ammunition load was decreased to 40 rounds due to its larger size. The M1A1 Abrams has a range of effective fire in excess of 4 kilometers, which was successfully demonstrated during Operation Desert Storm in 1991. A special M829A2 armor-piercing round was developed for the M1A1 to counter the threat possessed by the latest, at the time, Soviet-Russian main battle tanks. The M1A2 Abrams main battle tank is a further development of the M1A1. Currently, it is one of the best main battle tanks in the world. It is planned that this tank will remain in service beyond 2050. Protection of the M1A2 was improved by using depleted uranium mesh at the front of the hull and turret. It offers significant protection against all known anti-tank weapons. 
However, overall weight increased to 62.5 tons. Protection of the M1A2 Abrams is considered to be one of the best in the world. The tanks can be fitted with explosive reactor armor blocks, and some tanks are equipped with missile countermeasure devices intended to detect and jam guidance of the laser-guided missiles. The M1A2 has an improved fire control system, and its component's range of effective fire is in excess of 4 kilometers. This tank has a target acquisition system with hunter-killer capability. Whereas many tanks produced in the early 90s lacked this capability, this main battle tank can be airlifted by C-5 Galaxy or C-17 Globemaster III military transport aircraft. The M1A2 SEP, or System Enhancement Program variant, is a successor to the M1A2. It has improved armor protection, improved system components, improved computer components, and some other improvements. The SEP V2 is fitted with a remotely operated weapon station, armed with 12.7mm machine gun. The first M1A2 SEP tank was delivered to the US Army in 1999. There are at least 900 M1A2 SEP tanks in service. 240 of them were newly built. The others were upgraded to this standard from the M1, M1A1, and M1A2 tanks. The Tank Urban Survival Kit was developed for the Abrams series tanks to improve their survivability in an urban environment. Once the kit is applied, the tank has improved protection, firepower, and situational awareness. The kit can be applied by the units in field conditions. The SEMP V3 is the current production version of the Abrams tank. This version rectifies many of the space, weight, and power issues identified during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Improvements focus on increasing the electrical power margin, vehicle health management systems, integrated counter-improvised explosive device protection, a new auxiliary power unit enabling silent watch, embedded training, and an ammunition data link. It is the most reliable Abrams tank ever produced. The SEP V4 is the most lethal Abrams tank and is now in development, featuring the third generation forward looking infrared cameras, the cornerstone technology that will provide tank crews the ability to identify enemy tanks farther than ever before. With the upgrade, the Abrams will integrate a color camera iSafe laser rangefinder, a cross-platform laser pointer to facilitate multi-domain battle into the commander's sight. This program began early enough to onboard any technology the Army deems critical to the future battlefield to include artificial intelligence, autonomy, APS, or advanced sensors. The Abrams main battle tank closes with and destroys the enemy using mobility, firepower, and shock effect. It is a full-tracked, low-profile land combat assault weapon, enabling expeditionary warfighters to dominate their adversaries through lethal firepower, unparalleled survivability, and audacious maneuver. This tank sends a clear message to those who oppose the United States as to the resolve, capability, and might of the U.S. Army. What do you think of the insane power of the Abrams? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. The M10 Booker is set to become the future of armored fighting vehicles. As the winner of the U.S. Army's Mobile Protected Firepower Program, this vehicle has the potential to be an ever-present feature for the most powerful army in the world. Let's discover why this monster was chosen for future development and when we can expect to see the M10 Booker to take the battlefield. In 2016, reports suggested that the Army wanted to create a light ground combat vehicle to maintain the relevance of infantry brigade combat teams when engaged in extensive fighting against a similar enemy. At first, this was dubbed a light tank, but U.S. Army representatives renamed this program to Mobile Protected Firepower so that troops didn't treat it like a traditional tank like the M1 Abrams main battle tank. The vehicle, with a heavy gun and tank-like mobility, is less armored than an MBT like the M1. It's designed to go places the Abrams can't and to fight against enemy vehicles, defenses, and forces without needing the super-heavy armor that weighs down battle tanks. The MPF's development gave an excellent opportunity to fill a void left by the retirement of the M551 Sheridan Armored Reconnaissance Airborne Assault Vehicle. The M551 did have technical flaws, 
but it was greatly appreciated for its robust operational abilities. This left a gap that needed filling. In 2018, the Army selected bids from General Dynamics Land Systems and BAE Systems to develop their designs to fit the MPF brief. Prototypes of GDLS's Griffin II and BAE's M8 AGS were sent to the Army at the beginning of 2020. Two years later, BAE's submission was disqualified and the Army selected the GDLS model for initial production later that year. In 2023, the Army type reclassified the vehicle as the M10 Booker. Later that year, the U.S. Army revealed the award of a $1.14 billion contract to GDLS for the production and fielding of up to 96 of these vehicles. The overall objective is for 504 vehicles in total, with 14 MPS per brigade combat team. There are two people, both no longer with us, who have the surname Booker and are specifically honored in the naming. The first is Robert D. Booker. He was a soldier who fought as part of the U.S. Army in North Africa in 1943. When fighting against Axis forces in World War II, he used his machine gun to defeat one machine gun nest and despite receiving fatal injuries, guided his squad as they advanced. For these actions, he was awarded a posthumous Medal of Honor. The second person honored is Stephen A. Booker. He was among the tank crew leading the April 2003 assault on Baghdad. After the mounted machine gun failed to operate, he laid prone on top of the tank and guided his unit to defeat anti-tank fire. He was also fatally wounded during these actions and was awarded a posthumous Distinguished Service Cross. Now both will live on through this new vehicle that is set to be part of the U.S. Army's plans for decades. The design of the M10 Booker is conventional, with the driver and engine at the front, with the turret located at the rear of the hull. The turret houses a crew of a commander, gunner, and loader. The design of this turret is based on the M1 Abrams tank, using the M1A2 SEP V3 fire control system and the commander's independent thermal viewer. The vehicle also uses components and systems from the ASCOD Armored Tracked Vehicle Platform, which is fully designed and developed by General Dynamics European Land Systems. The Booker also has additional armor panels and under-vehicle protection against improvised explosive devices. For the additional safety of the crew, the design incorporates a tested compartmentalization system for ammunition storage. The vehicle has been designed with mobility and firepower in mind to make it a useful tool for clearing uneven terrain like the contested road to Baghdad or the fields of Tunisia, and then using a powerful gun to destroy fixed defenses and any defenders left crewing them. The U.S. Army already had one mobile tank-like vehicle with high-powered gun for similar purposes, the Stryker Mobile Gun System. That vehicle is armored and turreted, but has eight wheels instead of treads, and the Army is looking to move away from this kind of system. The new M10 Booker will fill a similar role, with a body designed for the wars of this century. In terms of weaponry, the main armament of the M10 Booker MPF is a 105mm cannon based on the American M35. For secondary armament, there's a 7.62mm machine gun mounted coaxially. The cannon has the ability to fire armor-piercing, discarding Sabo and high-explosive rounds, with a maximum firing range of 1.8 kilometers for the armor-piercing shells and 4 kilometers for the high-explosives equivalent. This main cannon is loaded manually. One 12.7mm heavy machine gun can also be mounted on the commander hatch. For further protection, two banks of four smoke grenade launchers are mounted on each side at the front of the turret. In addition to its weapons, the M10 Booker has Saffron Optic 1's Paseo Commander's Independent Tactical Viewer Long Range Panoramic Targeting Sight. This increases the situational awareness capabilities of armored and surveillance vehicles in all combat scenarios, whether that's stationary and on the move, even at high speeds. This feature is an advanced panoramic sight to improve the survivability and fighting capabilities of infantry fighting vehicles and main battle tanks. It's essential that the vehicle is mobile across a variety of terrains. To do this, the M10 Booker is equipped with a state-of-the-art MTU diesel engine contributing 800 horsepower and an Allison transmission system. This gives an excellent power-to-weight ratio 
and the ride is further improved with hydro pneumatic suspension. This all gives troops exceptional speed and adaptability in cross-country navigation. The Booker can run at a maximum road speed of 65 km per hour and has a top road range of around 190 miles. The vehicle is able to operate for 24 hours off the ramp or on arrival at the drop zone. The way this tank-like vehicle is designed means it can move over steep hills, valleys, cities, and rivers with relative ease. The cross-drive transmission system that it's fitted with is specifically engineered to help with propulsion, steering, and braking in medium-track combat vehicles. The hydro-pneumatic suspension seen on the vehicle is developed by the company Horstman Group, which uses high-pressure nitrogen gas and an integral oil damper all contained within the road arm. The suspension appears on each side of six road wheels with a drive sprocket at the front and the idler at the rear. The M10 Booker is priced at around $13 million a piece. Despite the ever-evolving counter-tank tools that are making armored assault vehicles harder, the need for militaries to advance under fire still remains. That makes tanks and tank-like vehicles a durable feature of modern armies, so expect to see the M10 Booker as a mainstay of future battles. What do you think about the M10 Booker? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Insane power of the M2 Bradley. In 1972, the U.S. Army requested design proposals to meet a requirement for a mechanized infantry fighting vehicle. The need for such a vehicle emerged directly from the arrival of the Soviet BMP-1 infantry fighting vehicles, which appeared in 1966 and combined mobility, firepower, and protection for a complete infantry squad. A complex series of design submissions and changing specifications followed until a fighting vehicle system appeared, comprising two vehicles, an infantry fighting vehicle, which became the M2 Bradley, and a cavalry fighting vehicle, which became the M3. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the M2 Bradley and see just how far it has come. Before we look at this, a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. But now, back to the M2 Bradley. The M2 Bradley or Bradley IFV is an American infantry fighting vehicle manufactured by BAE Systems Land and Armaments, which was formerly United Defense. One specific design requirement was that it should be as fast as the new M1 Abrams main battle tank so that they could maintain formations while moving, something which the older M113 armored personnel carrier could not do, as it had been designed to complement the older M60 Patton. The main role of the M2 was to provide protected transport for infantry squads into close contact with the enemy. It offered a significantly higher level of protection for the dismounts than the M113 armored personnel carrier. The M2 Bradley has a welded aluminum armor hull, and the front arc has a space laminated aluminum and steel armor construction. The initial variant, M2A0, provided protection against 14.5mm armor piercing rounds over the front arc. All round protection was likely to be against 7.62 to 12.7 mm rounds and artillery shell splinters. Eventually, the protection level was increased on upgraded models, which were also fitted with explosive reactive armor blocks that withstands hits from anti-tank rocket launcher rounds. The M2 Bradley is also fitted with the nuclear, biological, chemical protection system. The vehicle is armed with a two-man turret fitted with a 25mm dual-fed Bushmaster chain gun. At the time of its introduction, the Bradley was the first infantry fighting vehicle with a fully stabilized main gun. The gun fires both armor-piercing and high-explosive rounds, and there is a tow anti-tank guided missile launcher loaded with two missiles. These missiles have a range of 3,750 meters, and the M2 can carry an additional seven rounds. The Bushmaster chain gun is a single barrel with integrated dual-feed mechanism, and remote feed section. Normal rate of fire is 100 or 200 RPM with a possible single shot selection, but it can also change the type of ammunition with the simple flick of a switch. Two ready boxes, one of 70 rounds, the other of 230 rounds, are fitted in the turret. 
but 600 more rounds are stored inside of the hull. There is also a coaxial 7.62 mm machine gun. This can fire normal rounds with tracers, and maximal range can be 3,700 meters. Although practical combat range on the ground is more likely 800 meters and up to 1,800 against air targets. The gunner uses a combined day sight night thermal sight link to the commander with a 4 times to 12 times magnification range, plus his lateral periscopes and a daylight backup sight. Interestingly, during the US military actions in Iraq from 2003 until 2011, the Bradley series armored vehicles destroyed more Iranian armored vehicles than the Abrams main battle tank. The original Bradley infantry fighting vehicle accommodated three crew members, commander, gunner, and driver, plus six dismounts. There was a rear-powered operated ramp with integral doors for entry and exit. Early models of the M2 Bradley had firing ports with dedicated 5.56mm assault rifles attached. These firing ports were removed on upgraded models in order to increase protection of the side armor. Original versions of this infantry fighting vehicle were powered by a Cummings VTA 903 T500 turbocharged diesel engine, developing 500 horsepower. The maximum road speed was 66 km per hour, with a range of 480 km. The engine is located at the front and is mated to an automatic transmission. The M2 Bradley weighs 27.6 short tons and measures 6.55 meters in length, 3.60 meters in width, and 2.98 meters in height. The Bradley is designed to cross any terrain, even water, with the use of a swim barrier. It can transition to amphibious mode in five minutes. The newest Bradley models have an inflatable pontoon that is fitted to the front and sides of the vehicle. On water, the Bradley is propelled by spinning its tracks with a top speed of 7 km per hour. Throughout its service life, the M2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle Series has been the subject of numerous enhancements to improve combat capabilities and survivability for the vehicle and dismounts. Over the years, there have been four major improvement programs. Operational vehicles were upgraded to the M2A1, M2A2, M2A3, and M2A4 standards. The M2A1 developed in 1986 was fitted with TOW-2 anti-tank guided missiles of new generation. The vehicle was also fitted with explosive reactive armor blocks and an improved nuclear, biological, chemical protection system. The Bradley M2A2 was developed in 1988. This variant was fitted with an upgraded Cummings VTA 903T600 engine, developing 600 horsepower. The vehicle has a strengthened suspension and improved armor protection. Firing ports were removed from the hull sides due to the added armor panels. Anon explosive reactive armor blocks could be fitted for protection against anti-tank rockets and missiles. The hull floor was reinforced with steel plates for improved protection against mines, and the interior was lined with a spall liner. The front arc of the M2A2 withstands hits from 30mm armor-piercing ammunition and all-around protection against 14.5mm heavy machine gun fire. Due to significantly increased weight, this vehicle ended up being underpowered. Maximum road speed was just 56 km per hour and unrefueled range reduced to 400 km. Off-road mobility was also negatively affected. Some sources report that delivery of the Cummings VTA 903 T600 engine began in 1991. By 1999, Cummings had delivered well over 11,000 engines for the upgraded Bradleys and various versions of this vehicle. The M2A2 ODS or Operation Desert Storm is an upgraded version developed in 1995. Improvements for this vehicle were based on combat experience during the 1991 Gulf War. Upgraded vehicles were fitted with an iSafe laser rangefinder and tactical navigation system with a GPS receiver. There was a missile countermeasure device that could defeat first-generation wire-guided missiles. Another improvement was a battlefield command information system. The driver's station was fitted with a thermal imaging system for operation at night and in adverse weather conditions. Internal stowage was optimized and an extra seat was added. This meant that the M2A2 could carry seven dismounts instead of six. Croatia has reached an agreement with the USA to purchase 89 of the Desert Storm vehicles for $196.4 million, which included an additional 22 vehicles for spare parts. This makes a unit price of over $2.2 million per used M2A2 ODS vehicle. The next upgraded version of the M2 Bradley is the M2A3, which was introduced in 2002. Currently, this variant is the standard Bradley infantry fighting vehicle in service with the U.S. Army, and most previous Bradley IVFs were upgraded to this standard. 
the A3 upgrades make the Bradley IFV totally digital and upgrade or improve existing electronic systems throughout, improving target acquisition and fire control, navigation, and situational awareness. Also, survivability of the vehicle is upgraded with a series of armor improvements, again both passive and reactive, as well as improved fire suppression systems and nuclear biological chemical equipment. After the Iraq War, the Army began researching engineering change proposals for the M2 Bradley to restore space, weight, power, and cooling capacity reduced by the addition of armor and electronics hastily added during combat. The new proposals aim to restore mobility and allow the vehicle to handle more weight. The M2A4 is equipped with an enhanced drivetrain, more powerful engine developing 675 horsepower, new digitized electronics, a new fire suppression system, and a new IED jammer. Deliveries of upgraded vehicles commenced in 2020. In 2022, the first operational unit was equipped with the modernized M2A4 Bradley vehicles. The U.S. Army plans to upgrade more than 700 Bradleys to the new standard until 2029. Deliveries of the M2 Bradley commenced in 1981 and have continued since, with totals of over 4,600 vehicles. Some 400 M2 IFVs have been exported to Saudi Arabia. In 2017, a total of 32 M2A2s were delivered to Lebanon, and in 2020, it was announced that 350 M2A2s would be delivered to Greece. Upgraded M2 Bradley IFVs are scheduled to remain in active service with the U.S. military at least until 2029 and beyond, and there's no immediate plans to replace this vehicle with a next-generation infantry fighting vehicle. What do you think of the insane power of the M2 Bradley? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.